Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church on this Pentecost Sunday. We're glad that you have tuned in. Today we congratulate and celebrate all of our graduates of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church and all of our friends. Hats off to your faithfulness. God has blessed you with being able to graduate and we pray that God does the same thing in your life of faith. Brothers and sisters, we'll be looking at Daniel, the fourth chapter, and we pray that this Sunday is a blessing to you. Brothers and sisters, enjoy our worship service. Hear you. 
he will, yes he will, yes he will.
sisters, as we prepare to jump into the word of God, let's consult with God in prayer. God, we thank you for this time that we share together. We pray that you send your Holy Spirit. And Lord God, that you illuminate the text and let the text come to life for us. And God, we pray that something is said that is meaningful uh, for these, your people. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, our strength, uh, our redeemer, my redeemer. May we all say amen, amen, amen. Brothers and sisters, if you would, I know that this is Pentecost Sunday, and I pray that God rains down on you and he baptizes you by fire. We want to go to, however, the book of Daniel. We want to go to the book of Daniel. We want to go to the book of Daniel. We want to read the 27th verse, and we want to read all the way down uh, to the 31st verse, 27 through 31. I am reading from the Common English Bible, the Common English Bible, and there you will find words like this. Therefore, your majesty, please accept my advice. Remove your sins by doing what is right. And I want to share with someone today, you ought to remove your sins by doing what is right. Right. No matter what you see around you, no matter, no, no matter what no one else is doing, you ought to remove from sin by doing what is right. Remove your wrongdoing by showing mercy to the poor, then your safety will be long lasting. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later, he was walking on the roof of the White House, excuse me, the palace at Babylon. The king declared, isn't this Babylon the magnificent city that I have built as the royal house by my own mighty strength and for my own majestic glory? These words hadn't even left the king's mouth when he was fact-checked by a voice from heaven. You, King Nebuchadnezzar, are now informed kingship is taken away from you. You will be driven away. And brothers and sisters, just for a moment, I just want to use as a theme for the time that we share together, reaching a hard head and a hard heart. Sometimes God has to reach us even as pleasant parishioners because we have a hard head and we have an even harder heart. Brothers and sisters, Jay-Z performs a song entitled It's a Hard Knock Life which is affectionately known as the ghetto anthem. The lyrics of this song say, it's a hard knock life for us. Instead of treated, we get tricked. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. It's a hard knock life. Perhaps you have heard that song, perhaps you jive with the song, Brothers and sisters, I share this with you. I completely and absolutely understand these lyrics. They resonate with me because in many cases of life, for the disenfranchised, our existential experience has often offered us a bad hand whereby difficulties and hardships seem to permeate every facet of our existence. Instead of justice, we get chipped. Instead of fairness, we get killed. 
It's a hard not life. And I mean, if you really want to see it, uh, take a look around us, brothers and sisters. We'll see disparity in health care. We'll see, even if you look around us, victim blaming. We'll even hear stuff like all lives matter, uh, even while we're ignoring the fact that black lives are in hazard. Brothers and sisters, we'll find stuff like radical or racial profiling. We'll find police brutality. We'll find mass incarceration of black and brown bodies. We'll find covert racist jokes at our expense. We'll find insensitivity instead of empathy. When the looting starts, the shooting starts. Brothers and sisters, it's a hard not life. Therefore, there are many who experience hard knocks because of systematic obstruction but there are those who also experience hard knocks through God's knocks because of a hard head. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but brothers and sisters, a thick head can do just as much damage as a hard heart. And I don't know, brothers and sisters, who you are, but you perhaps need to know and hear this. The old axiom says uh, that a hard head makes a song. Such is the case in our text. If you read the text, you will see that King Nebuchadnezzar was not a casualty of an oppressive system, but he was a privileged protagonist and a proponent of persecution. He was the oppressive system. And many times, that is the hardest person to reach when folks are too privileged to perceive the prejudices that they promote. In chapter four, we read about mighty king Nebuchadnezzar, a man with everything this world could offer, included unparalleled wealth, seemingly limitless power. He had a worldwide fame and the ability to fulfill his every desire. One of the things that I've noticed in life, brothers and sisters, we become hard to reach when we become hard to teach. He was a hard to reach man because he was a hard to teach man. It's a shame that when you have experienced, uh, when you have had experiences and what you have experienced have taught you absolutely nothing. Again, I'll share this again. I don't care who hears me, brothers and sisters, it is a shame that when you have had experiences and those experiences that you have had in life have taught you absolutely nothing. King Nebuchadnezzar had personal encounters with God. He had been exposed to the spiritual truths about a true and a living God. In other words, he had experienced what God could do in his life. Allow me to recount and to recount the record. Daniel chapter 2. Nebuchadnezzar couldn't sleep because he was disturbed and disconcerted about a dream and he called up Daniel to interpret the dream and Daniel told him that the dream meant that God's kingdom had no end and scripture says that Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged the supremacy of Daniel's God and promotes Daniel but regrettably what the text also says is that he never learned his lesson. Walk with me through the text. Daniel chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar still didn't learn his lesson. But brothers and sisters, he set up foolishly a golden image of himself and he commanded that everyone would worship it. But even here, he had an experience 
experience in life with God because when he had the experience in life with God, he looked over into the furnace. And when he looked over into the furnace, brothers and sisters, he saw not only Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walking around in the fire, but he looked over there again and he saw four men walking around in the fire. And brothers and sisters, what he said was that I see not only three men, but I see four men, and the fourth man looks like the Son of God. So what I share with you that he's had experience with God. Nonetheless, while Nebuchadnezzar is a dumb school indeed, nevertheless, while Nebuchadnezzar is a dumbbell, he's a hard head, he's a bone head, but the grace of the text also coupled along with the justice of the text alludes to my next point. My next point is no one is beyond the reach of God. No one either in grace or justice is beyond the reach of God. Whether we want to call him Captain Chaos or the Tangerine Tornado, I share this with you even in our context today. No one either in grace or in justice is beyond the reach of God. Someone may be saying, well, Reverend Letcher, what in the world do you mean by grace or justice? Well, what I'm sharing with you is no one is beyond the reach of God when God decides to have mercy on us and give us grace. And then no one is outside of the reach of God when God decides to rain down his justice. Brothers and sisters, no one is beyond the reach of God, whether it's by grace or by justice. And I know many of us, it seems like that no matter how much we do, we can't reach some folks. But I share this with you, God can no matter how much we do, it just seems like there are some folks that just won't hear us or there are some folks that just won't listen to us that no matter what we do, we can talk to some folks until we turn blue, but there are some folks that we just can not reach. Whether we kneel in peaceful protests at a football game, we are called SOBs. Whether we pick it or proclaim that I can't breathe, some folks may say, well, if he's talking, that means he can still inhale and exhale. Brothers and sisters, it seems like no matter what we do, we are not getting across. Whether we burn a city down in indignant uprising, it's disorderly and undermining the cause. It just seems like we can't reach the unreachable heart and heart of a racist construct. But oh, my brothers and sisters, what encourages me is that God can. God can. God can not only reach them, but God already has a hold of them. Look at the text. Nebuchadnezzar was a wealthy and powerful man. By today's measure, perhaps you could say that he was worth perhaps $2.6 billion. Perhaps he was a Twitter troll. He was an astute businessman. He was a shrewd industrialist. He commanded the entire ancient Babylonian world, one of the strongest militaries in the land. His word went with no rebuttal or no veto. He perhaps was the most powerful man in all the ancient world. Nevertheless, his problem was that he couldn't get over himself. And he felt that these great achievements were accomplished by his own 
strength. What a mistake that we make when we think that all that we are is because of who we are. And we fail to recognize the power and the provision of an almighty God. What a mistake we make when we allow the power uh, and the provision of God to escape our glory. What a, 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 what a mistake that we make, brothers and sisters, when we allow the arrogance of a supremacist attitude to dismiss and diminish the sanctity of minority life. What a mistake we make. What happens in the text blesses me in that sometimes wrath can make our reason return. Wrath can make our reason return. God's wrath can make our reason return. If you look at the text, brothers and sisters, you will see that King Nebuchadnezzar looked out on the earth and surveyed everything that was in it and he felt like that he it was because he was the big man in charge that everything that is living is living but brothers and sisters what the Lord told and came to Nebuchadnezzar and said brothers and sisters that he uh, what had just a little bit of time to be able to restore. God decided to reach Nebuchadnezzar in a dream. The text says God came to Nebuchadnezzar in a dream, which means he was asleep. Sleep is when we are at our most vulnerable. California rapper The Game says in his LP single Dreams, he says that Sleep is the cousin of death, so my eyes are wide open because a dream is kin to the last breath. Brothers and sisters, what you must understand that we are at our most vulnerable when we are asleep. If you don't believe me, first uh, Samuel 26, David called Saul and his bodyguards asleep. David uh, could have taken Saul's life with his own spear. Judges 16 and 19, after Delilah put Samson to sleep in her lap, uh, she cut off uh, all of his dreads and all of his glory. Therefore, the implication here is that sometimes, for some of us, God has to get our attention when we are in our most vulnerable. I'm done. Brothers and sisters, the last thing I share with you is that reaching for God means renouncing or rejecting our sin. Look at Daniel 4 and 27. King Nebuchadnezzar, please accept my advice. Stop sinning. Do what's right. Break from your wicked past and be merciful to the poor. Perhaps then you will continue to prosper. I want to leave this with you. Do what's right. Stop injustice. Be merciful to the needy. Brothers and sisters, and when you do that, as a nation, we can be healed. May God bless you and may God keep you. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. If you would like to join Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, the door of the church is open. The door of God's house is open. If you would like to join our church, you can send us an email to ghpruitt at gmail.com. You can send us an email at ghpruitt at gmail.com and we will respond to you within 48 hours. We are thankful for you. We're thankful for all of our visitors who have logged in. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for you. We are a church um, who is striving to become pleasantly purposeful for all people. Also, brothers and sisters, those of you who would like to give,
We thank God for all of the pleasant parishioners and partners of PG who have been faithful in their giving. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. We thank you for your faithfulness in giving. However, if you would like to give to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, you can send a check or a money order uh, to 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place is right down here at the bottom of the screen. 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Or also, you can look again down here. Look at it. Look again down here. You can see it. You can give online. www.pgmbcstl.org. And you can give online. We bless God for all of you. We bless God for all of you. Thank you for tuning in. And we pray that this word has been helpful. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. May we all say together virtually, amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you for stopping by to worship with us today. I pray that the word and the worship has been inspiring to your heart. I pray that it has been information for your mind and evoking to your actions. God bless you until we meet again.